we are not seeing a significant genetic influence on the coastal populations of the Levant from elsewhere. They look very, very similar to the groups that we see inland in Syria and Jordan and places like that, suggesting that there was not a huge influx of people from somewhere else into the coastal regions of the Levant. So the, the people who lived in, in this region prior to the Phoenician period, the, the so-called Canaanites, are in fact the Phoenicians. There was a cultural shift, but not a genetic one. So the Phoenicians, the Canaanites, and today's Lebanese are all the same people, and they're all very closely related to groups living in Syria and elsewhere in the Middle East. So that's kind of interesting, and that we're, we're pretty certain about that. We Again, it's a pilot study. We'd like to expand the sample sizes, but we are pretty certain about those results. Now, in terms of tracing the spread, that turns out to be more complicated because in their largest colony, Carthage, modern-day Tunis, we are finding that less than 20% of the genetic lineages that we find there could have come out of the Middle East. Most of them look like aboriginal North African markers, for lack of a better term. They, they look like they've been there for much longer. So this is a maximum of 20%. It might be as low as 10% or even less. And again, we're awaiting more data to be able to tell for sure. What that means is that as the Phoenicians moved into this region, they probably didn't have a huge genetic impact. They, they simply changed the culture. So again, in the, ways, in the same way that the Sea Peoples probably influenced in some way the coastal population of the Levant, the, the people who became known as the Phoenicians influenced the region of North Africa around Carthage, but they didn't have a massive genetic input. There wasn't a huge you know, resettlement of people. At least we don't see evidence of it.